Did it start it back right? Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to another worship experience here at St. Thomas Missionary Baptist Church. Whether you're seated in the sanctuary or you're viewing us via Facebook. For again, today we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Today we come to give him praise, glory, and honor. Today we come to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for another day. 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 It could have gone the other way, but thank you for another day. Could have been dead sleeping into my grave, but thank you for another day. Could have been in a car wreck, but thank you for another day. Could have been in a jail cell, but thank you for another day. Could have been in a hospital bed, but thank you for another day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And regardless of what the devil throws at us, we shall rejoice in this day because this is the day that the Lord has made. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
your hand. Hallelujah. Wonderful day to be here in the house of the Lord. And to praise him and lift him up and see all these beautiful smiles and faces. <laughs> Praising God. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be here. I know uh, a song that we used to sing a long time. It says something like this. Let me see if I can sing it up. Let's see it go. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I, oh, here we go. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone. To wash my sins away. Hey, hey, and now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus put me the debt that I could never pay. Y'all know that song? He paid a debt. I could not pay, I owed a debt. I could not pay, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could pay. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt. I could never pay. <laughs> Praise him. You know, he, he paid that debt that we couldn't pay. It was Jesus who died and got up. And his blood that cleansed us from all of our sin. You now I heard a talk one time that <clears throat> a guy was teaching. He said that half of the people that believe <clears throat> not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And he used scriptures. He said, the scripture, when it said that uh, when the Lord returned, he said, two would be in the field, one taken and the other left. He said, two would be in the bed, one taken and the other left. But he told us that he said, be ready. Be ready because he's going to come in a day when we're not expecting it. Another script he used, he said that there were ten virgins. Y'all remember that? And five were wise and five were foolish. And they all went to meet him, but five of them couldn't go. So that's what he, those are the things that he was saying, that for us to be prepared, to be ready. He was encouraging us to stay, keep our faith and keep our trust in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So whenever he comes, We'll be ready. Praise his name. So this morning as we go to prayer, there's a couple, uh, Brother Jenkins, uh, Eddie Jenkins, huh? Jesse Jenkins, yeah, Jenkins, and then um, Eddie Span's mother uh, is asking for prayer. And anybody else, you know, that's out here asking for prayer, you know, there's a, a scripture that uh, was said there were these blind men that followed Jesus, and they were saying to Jesus, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. It says that when Jesus came into the house, the men came into him. And Jesus asked them this question. Believe ye that I'm able to do this, that I'm able to have mercy on it. Do you believe that? And they said, yes, we believe. And so Jesus laid his hand on them, and they were healed. So when we go into prayer, whatever you're asking for, do you believe it? Do you have faith that God can do what you ask him to do? And the thing is that, Yes, I do. I have faith. Whether I'm praying for my loved ones, whether I'm praying for my family, whoever I'm praying for, I believe that you're able to do it. 
I believe. As we sing, go to the Father. Father, we come in your presence in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're so wonderful. We magnify you today. For you're holy, and we lift you up and magnify you today in this house, Father. We love you, Father, with all of our body, mind, soul, and strength, Father. Oh, you're so wonderful. We thank you, Father, because it was you that allowed us to see another day. It was you, Father, that watched over us the whole week. It was you, and we magnify you today, Father. We love you, we praise you, and we glorify you, Father. Now, those names that were called out, those people who were having problems in their body, Father, we know, Father, that you're able to heal. We ask that you will move in a mighty way, Father, to help those individuals. Those, even the names that are calling out now, Father, for themselves, for their loved ones, for their friends, Father. We ask in the name of Jesus that you move in a mighty way today, Father. We just love you, Father. We pray, Father, that you continue to give us your spirit, your wisdom, and knowledge, and revelation knowledge of you, Father. We pray, Father, that you will continue to open our eyes of understanding, Father, that we might know what is your calling and what is your will for us to each and do in every day. Father, we know that, that if we keep our hope, hope in you, Father, and keep our faith in you, Father. You'll continue to move in our, in our way, Father. You'll continue to lift us up. You'll continue to heal us. You'll continue to do things that we can't do, Father. We praise you and we magnify you, Father. We pray for, Father, those that are locked up this morning, those that are behind bars. We pray, Father, that you continue to give them strength. Continue to give them joy, Father. Continue to minister to them, Father. Oh, Lord, we just love you today, Father. For there's so many people that are hurting, Father. We pray, Father, that you will continue to move in their way, Father. We love you today, Father. We thank you, Father. We continue to lift you up in this house, Father. We thank you for blessing this ministry. We thank you for blessing our families. We thank you for blessing our homes. And we just praise you today, Father. We pray, Father, as this service go on, Father, we pray that you continue to bless each person. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. He's a good God, and he's truly worthy to be praised. He do so many things for us that we don't see. We don't know how we got here. Some of us probably didn't even know we were going to be here this morning. We weren't planning to be here, but we are here, you know, and we'll continue to thank him for that. We continue to thank you for your gifts and, and uh, your tithes and your offerings and your seeds that you're planting in this ministry. Let's lift our hands and bless those things. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the tithes. We thank you for the gifts. We thank you for all the things that they are doing for this particular church. Father, we ask that you bless them and we give you thanks for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
give him a round of applause. He plays one thing. Great job. Great job. There you go. Look at it. Hey, high five. That's what I'm talking about. Give it up. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's exciting to see Jesus work. It's exciting to see Jesus works. It's, it's exciting. And, and I want to just share how God just do little, little stuff. I want to encourage us to look at the little stuff. The pastor opened up and said, it's good for us, brothering, to a dwell in what? Unity, right? And see, I'm going to connect the dots. Some people don't get the dots. Let me connect them for you. And I'm going to be preaching on Christ's call to unity. See, that, see, that got me excited. See, because that, that means that, that, that what God has given me is aligned with what he wants for us. Brotherly and unity. See, sometimes we, I, I was going to ask the young people this question. When we come to church, what do we expect? When we come to worship, it's like when we go to work, we just check the dot. I got my eight hours in. I got my 12 hours, where it is, I'm going to check the dot, and I'm going to just go back home. Or do we look for God? I got my message. Don't worry about it. God wants me to say, let's slow it down to acknowledge God, acknowledge God for the little things. We run to worship, but are we ready to worship? We run to the sanctuary, are we ready for the word? Or do you just run and say, check it off my list? Or do we look for that word, just go to get just one little word, or one little touch, it's going to soothe me, it's going to take care of me. We all are here for a purpose, a bigger purpose, and that is to worship and praise Jesus Christ and give him the glory. To give him the Give it back to him because he already, the glory is, is already in us. It's good to just sort of look and see how God operates. How many of you just walk sometimes? Just, you just walk around and just see the, the trees, the bloom, and the, the flowers blooming and all these things. Say, God, you are such a great God. You're such a good God. The money come in there like, thank you, Lord. When you really need it, we seek it, don't we? But when you don't expect it, God still, he give it to you to show you how much he loves you. That's the kind of God we serve. So we got to be mindful of how we approach God. This is not the point we just check the box. This is where we come and hear a word from God. To make sure that we get what we need so that we can give it to someone else. Because we're strengthened in unity when we work together and we give him the glory. And I, and I paused because I was thinking about when I was going to church at a young age and I'd just go to church, just check it off. Boop, go to Sunday school, check it off, check it off. Boop not realizing God was trying to get my attention. God's trying to give me something that's going to help me for the today, tomorrow, and forevermore. But I got to be mindful that I got to slow it down. Because he's the only one that's going to meet that need. He's the only one that got me. People, I like what people say, I got you. I got you. But God got us. He got us. And I, in my notes, said, take a moment to the soil. I'm a little country boy. I grew up, I used to pick the soil. And my granddad used to pick it. I used to watch it. A little sand in it, a little, a little, a little, a little clay in it. It won't, it won't produce. So how your soil today? How's your heart? How's your heart? Are you ready for the word to be planted in your, in your heart? Or you need to say, Lord, I, I need you to just forgive me. I need you to, I need something right now. 
And I was thinking this whole couple weeks about schools starting this month. And our children need to know that they're safe. We need to know that they're protected. We need to know that God got them. And I was praying and praying. I, I, God took me this way, but it's a message for us all. If you don't mind, stand. We're going to read John chapter 17. We'll be coming from 15 through 26, but for time's sake, 15 through 21. Jesus is about to wrap it up on earth. He's about to come to, go to the cross. Seventeen, fifteen, so at fifteen. John seventeen, fifteen, NIV. I'll be reading from NIV. He said, "My prayer is that not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one." They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Watch this right here. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them might be one. Father, just as you are I, you are, you are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Will you pray with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, God. And we pray that people will believe in you, God, and rest to you, God. And receive you as a personal Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I stated earlier, we'll be talking about Christ's call to unity. Christ's call to unity. We have the privilege of hearing Jesus praying to his Father about you. To continue in love by spreading the gospel of God to all. Jesus is wrapping it up. If you look at in chapter 17, he's talked about he was praying and for himself. Now he's praying for the disciples. I got a question for you today. Who shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with you? Who shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with you? Think about that. Was it your teacher? Was it an aunt? Was it a friend? Was it at VBS? Who shared Jesus Christ with you? And what do you remember about that moment of someone sharing Jesus Christ with you? Did you get excited about reflecting on how Jesus was shared with you? Because they love you so much that they shared Jesus with you. The next question is, when did you believe it? When did you believe it? Was it at that moment? Or did you have to go to situations to grow to that point where you said, I believe? See, we all have different beginnings. But we do have a beginning. When did you believe that Jesus Christ was the one? When did you accept him into your heart? And made him Lord of your life. Or he's just a friend. Or is he more than a friend? Is he your Lord and Savior? See right here he's talking about. May. My prayer is that. Not that you. Take them out of the world. But you protect them from the evil one. Who need protection today? Who need that God. Knowing that God is with you. Lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Who need that protection? I need that protection. 
Protect you from the evil one, because the evil one's trying to what? Destroy us. He's trying to take us out of God's plan or God's calling for our lives. The purpose God had planned in you, only you can do that. He said, protect them. They are not of the world, even as I am not. He's talking about his future disciples. This is what I want you to understand. He's talking about those who accept Jesus Christ as, his, as their personal Savior. He said, go on, verse 17, he said, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. I heard this several years back, almost maybe three, de three decades ago. A great theologian said this word. It took the word of God to save us. Now it takes the word of God to keep us. Thank you, Deacon Ward, for that quote. How about you today? Do you hungry for that word like you used to? Is it a priority? Is it something that he said, this is the truth, I'm going to say, I'm trying to set you apart. Only I'm going to set you apart is by my word. I need to know that you are receiving the truth, that you're seeking the truth. That your desire is to please me. That's what he's telling us. That you want me more than you want the world. He said, you're in the world, but you're not what? Of the world. How many of us tried the world? Oh, I'm the only one tried? Hey, it failed me. That's why I'm with Jesus. I observe things. I have I look at them. I'm in the world. Hang out. Hey, I don't, I don't. It's not. I'm not. You know how you just, you get a little moot. Like, this is not where I need to be. This is not what I need to do. What a man thinks so is what? Is he. I got to get into the word that God saturate me with the word so I can. Be what he called me to be. That for he can protect me, I got to be what? Set apart. Or we hop over here and we go to church on Sunday. We hop over here Monday through Saturday. Then we'll slide back a little bit. He said, to be set apart. Do you want to really experience Jesus Christ? That's what he's saying. Do you really want me? I, I'm giving you everything you need. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world too. For them, I sanctify myself. He gave us great examples over and over. Mentoring at the examples like the example he's given us. To say it's possible. Trust me, it's possible. Christians are not of the world, but they are in the world to witness for Christ. We are to witness for who? Christ. We are to what? Share our story. Now, we have different things, evangelism, we have different things that... Uh, 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 John, we have different Roman role. All these different things are different tools. But the most powerful tool is your testimony. How God changed you. And how you believe the change is in you. So then your what? Your lifestyle reflect what's in the word of God. We keep our lives clean through the what? His word. We keep our life clean through what? His word. Now, when I got married, with no book for me to read about how to be a father, how to be a faithful husband, none of that. But the Bible. And he said, if you want to be wise, hang around what? Wise people. So I started hanging around wise people. And I start growing. 
And I start realizing that what I need is all in here. I just got to what? Meet him there. Christ had exactly sent us into the world to take his place. What an awesome responsibility. Christ has sent us to take his place. What an awesome responsibility, young people. Is it not an awesome responsibility? Watch this right here. Verse 20. Now he's praying. He said, my prayer. If you want to read John 17, we have a little difficult time. Read. He's praying for us. He said, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. I pray that others will come to Jesus Christ. That future disciples of Jesus Christ, that you will have an impact on their life. Grandmothers, you have an awesome responsibility. My grandmother shared Christ with me. I still remember that moment. I get excited. When I, got, when I reflect back on the goodness of God. He said right here, he said, that all of them may be one. For just as you are in me, I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Do your neighbors, your friends, your associates see Jesus in you? Regardless of their denomination, do they see Jesus Christ in you? Like I said, I accept Jesus Christ at an early age, and I was going over this message. God showed me something. When I was in elementary school, now everybody listen, elementary, middle school, high school, I missed the mark. Because I didn't realize I was supposed to go share Jesus Christ. You're just bringing them to church, right? Because the preacher don't just give him what to say, right? Pre- just bring him to the preacher, and he going to get sure of Christ, and everything will be taken care of, right? That's where I, that, that I saw to connect. You, we all went to a different revival, a different church, and, you know, people came to the morning event and everything, and, you know, you brought them to church, right? But I didn't actively use my faith in the elementary school, middle school, junior high. I mean, I was a good person. I just talked to people about Jesus. Hey, you go to church? You don't come out of church? You know, we'll hang out. And I thought about that. Now we, we, we are encouraging, we're coaching our young people to share Jesus Christ in their school. You, know, you can get saved right now. Do you love Jesus? Recognize that you're a sinner? Hey, you have been empowered to share Christ. You have been empowered to make an eternal impact for God. See, some of y'all look at me, I, I just, I thought about it. See, you know what? Did I show Jesus Christ in junior? I had good friends that knew, you know, I believe, and, and I talked about Jesus, and I used to sing in choir and all that kind of stuff like this, but never did I witness like I witness now. When I got to college, I looked like, like let me tell you what changed my world. I was in the dorm at Whittington at Mississippi College, and some people came by just to talk, and they encouraged me encouraged me where I was. And it, we shut down, we, 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 we broke bread, we looked look at the word of God. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I've done that. I, I know Jesus Christ. I have a personal relationship. And then he told me, if you love God, you need to share him. Don't keep him, what? To yourself. And as you exercise that muscle, you're going to have what? Muscle memory. You're going to what? You're getting what? Stronger. So as you exercise the word of God in you, you become stronger. You become what? More dependent on Jesus Christ and he can do all things through you. So no matter what the devil's sending your way, he got your protection. If you don't exercise it, you don't know if it's there. You know that exercise bike you got in the corner over there you bought? I'm going to use all, yeah. Don't use it. It's going to... Collect, yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Got to get on that bike. He says something in verse 22, and I, I had to study this one because he said something that sort of, it, it blew me away. He said, 
in verse 22, he said, I have given them glory. He said, look at verse 22. He said, I have given them glory that they, that you gave to me that they may be in me. That one as we are one. I have given you what that glory is talking about. When did I get the glory? How many of you got the glory? You got the glory? Oh, see, I'm going to show you something. You, watch this. What is glory? The word glory describes God's invisible attributes made visible to us. The air is thick with his presence. Sometimes you walk in the worship center and you feel the air is thick. And you feel like God's presence. Pastor, can't you feel his presence today? And you say, yes, I feel the presence of God. That's what he's talking about. To show us his visibility. The air is sticking with his presence. He is everywhere, but our eyes can't see him. So he must make himself visible. And that process is revealed to us as God's glory. The word glory describing glory. Describe the God's Invisible attribute made visible to us. The air is thick with his presence. He is everywhere. Don't you see him everywhere? Amen. When you walk to work and you go to the gas station, wherever you're in the mall, wherever you look, you, look, the, the, you see someone that you don't know and, and something happened like, God, you was right there. That's what we're talking about. God's glory. Understanding glory. Exodus 33, put it this way. Exodus 33, look at 17 and 23. God exists for his own glory. So the more we plug into his glory, and the more we experience his existence and his attributes as operating to throw and, and with us and for us, he's always with, he's operating on our behalf. So we need to what? Make a big deal out of it, don't we? We didn't even know that, that God is working things out. He is doing what he said he's going to do. He said, I have given them the glory. He, he didn't say, it may come. It will come. He said, I have given it to you what? Right now. Everybody looking at me like, what is this glory? Romans 8.30, put it this way. He said, in those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also what? Glorified. Y'all missed it. Hold on. Did you hear what he just said? And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So when you accept Jesus Christ, when he said, you know what? I paid your sin for you. It's no longer you have a debt. You've been justified. Now for what? For my glory. I have placed it in you to give glory back to who? God. He said, I have put it in you so you can operate who I call you to be. Yes. Because the plan of God, the believer has already been glorified. This is another proof of eternal security. How many of you want security? Huh? I was, I was working with this guy recently. He said something. He's, he's in security. He's a, a leader in security uh, at the job. And he said, yep, I got me one of these security, security surveillance in my Lawn, but I don't have a lawn system. Are we like that? Hey, I, hey, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a state got a flag. I'm a Christian, but I'm not operating on the word of God. That's not a security. I'm talking about security is in Jesus Christ. As believers, we are already glorified as far as God is concerned. Christ Praise that we might be with him 
and see his glory. That we might see him. What you want today? You'll be like, Tom, let me touch you, Lord. What you need God to do for you so you can say, Lord, I see you. And I want to be with you. What it's going to take, young people, to give up the world and get with Christ. You like the world so much that you said, Lord, give me one minute. Give me a time. Give me a day. Give me two years, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you. Tomorrow is what? It's not a promise. Why we play like that? I, 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 need, I need some time, Lord. I got a bad habit, Pastor. I need some time. Let me work this thing out. How are you going to put that justification in you and that glory in you, huh? When you got to work something. He wants to put something in you that's eternity. So now you're connected and you have that what? Love relationship. Why you want that? Because with God, you can't go wrong. With God, you can't go wrong. Even if you went wrong, he'll bring you back. He'll clean you up. He restore those years. He will help you regain whatever you lost. He's able. Is he not able? Amen. He is able. He called us to a unity. It's not about denominate. It's about loving Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And when you go to school, you can sit next to a Catholic or, or atheist. Hey, how you doing? You know Jesus? Yeah, well, I don't know him. Tell me about him. See right there? What? Opportunity what? Knocking at the door. What you going to do? Open it up or close it? Keep it closed. All right. God said he's waiting on you now. Waiting on you. I'm going to tell you why. Because God always answers prayer. See, that's why you need to be on his side. He always, have you ever not answered your prayer? Mm. Mm -mm. You remember uh, Lazarus? Uh, every Christian who died goes to heaven because Christ prayed that this might be. Verse 24. Understand that every Christian what, who died goes to heaven, right? That's what he said, right? See, do we get excited about that? I know, I, hey, I, just, I lost a mom too, but I realize she's in a better place. So I got to get my mindset to be what? To be aligned with God's word so God can use me so I don't feel a pity party, right? Yes, yeah, so okay, he said, take your time to grieve, but don't grieve what? Long. Mary about the Lord, but if you was here, yes, Lazarus, he's not dead. But you said, Lord, I know he's going he's to rise. He's going to rise. I know he will because you said he will. But I said, no, today. How many need the Lord today? How many you need him right now? He's a right now God. Yes, he is. In John 11, 41, 42, he said, he raised. He said, move that rock. Move that stone. Lazarus, come out. And what happened? Then he answered the prayer. Yes, he did. Was he not faithful? Notice that he took his time. How I saw he took his what? He, he didn't rush. Oh, okay, he, he's good. One day. Two, see, see we won't, we're in a hurry. God, Lord, hurry up. I got this video game I got to do. Lord, hurry up. Second day. Take his time. Why rush me? How many of us are trying to rush God? See, see, I learned, even at, at work or wherever, and things not going well, I just pray. Lord, okay. Maybe I need to just pause because maybe, that, not maybe, but you said, you, I'm thinking you protect me from an accident. I drive down the highway, guess what? Accident. I was here, uh, was that uh, Friday? St. Thomas Road, a trailer fell off somewhere over here. 
here on the other side. Did y'all hear about that? I said, I thank the Lord. For the little thing, Lord, I thank you that I wasn't in an accident. One day I was driving to, uh, to work down to Vicksburg in the 18 wheeler. Was like, I was in the second lane and I stopped because the 18 wheeler had the hazard light on. The trailer, I was right there on the trailer. And I looked behind me and another car was coming, hitting the horn, beep, beep. And I'm like, can't you stop? I'm about to have an accident. I said a little prayer and God stopped. I swore back over here and took off. God is a good God. Yes. See, He's praying for us. And also, we need to what? Pray for what? Ourselves. Lord, I hear you, Lord. I, I hear what you're saying. You love me. And that's what he's saying in verse 20. So he said, I love you because I'm in you. Like I'm the Father's in me. I love you with an everlasting love. I haven't forgotten about you. I'm still here with you. Let's go. Because the only thing we do for Christ is going to last. You know, think about all that. The country, I'll go to the country quite a lot this year because I said, Lord, I need to go and lose some weight. And the Lord said, go to the country. And I've been going to the country. I've been working on decks. I've been working on this. I almost passed out a couple of times, but Lord is good. Thank you for water. Little things. I'm telling you, I tell you, the little things. I see how God operates. When I talk to my cousins, and I talk to them a lot now, and just, just in, encouraging each other, and, and they start talking about Jesus. And I see my other cousin, he got, he got one son, and I, I see how excited he is about having that son and about how he's really just developing his son. And God, get the glory for the good things he's doing. Are you really enjoying your relationship with Jesus? That's what 26 is. Are you really enjoying your relationship with Jesus? Do you, you have a relationship? You're not enjoying it? Back in the day where I used to date, if I wasn't enjoying a relationship, I'm out of there. <laughs> My grandma was talking about, out of the mind is a devil workshopper. But see, y'all missed it. It's a relationship. It's a love relationship. It's something where God gives me and I work with God. We're we working together on this, right? Oh, okay. Let me get to what he said. And, and, and about to close, Roman, uh, John 14. He put it this way. John 14, 21 said this right here. <clears throat> As we come and think about this, he said, whoever has my commands... And obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He said, What? Whoever has my command, he's the one what? That loves me. Wow. He who loves me will be will be loved by my father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. See that love relationship? Do you love him? Are you following his word? It go on in 23. Said, Jesus replied, if anyone who loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and, will, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Does the Lord have a home with you? Is he residing? I know people say, is he residing with you? Is he living with you? Huh? Or do you take him and just put him on the oh, I'm going to just put him down a little bit. I'll come back to That's how we feel. Like. Hey, let, let, let me lay down my what? Religion. Well, you lay on down. Leave it there. Because yeah. he said he wanted a love relationship. See, 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 we can keep that there. He said, I, wanna, I want you to know I love you, that I chose you, and now you have chosen me. Now let's get this thing right. Love the Lord with all our mind, body, and soul. Do you love him? Do you love him? Huh? Do you need strength sometimes? You say, Lord, give me strength. Lord, I need peace. Whatever you need, you have a love relationship with Jesus Christ. So whatever you need, he said, I'm going to give it to you. Or do you wait till you so far down that you can't even pray for yourself? 
That's why we need each other. When we see a brother or sister down, we, got, we lift them up in prayer. Let them know we care. We're right there with them. And he said, he who, he who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Oh, you obeying his teaching? Hmm? I'm just being real. How can you love the Lord if you don't obey his teaching? How can you love the Lord if you don't get aligned with God's word? How can you say, Lord, you do everything you want to do? You say, Lord, I still love you. But yet God said, I don't know who you are. Who are you? You, you, you lay down your relationship. Well, well, pick up and get a, re- a relationship. Are you tired of being sick and tired? Are you really going to try the true and living God so you can be set apart to do what God called you to do? In closing, it's about your calling. God has called you to a higher purpose, to fulfill that purpose. How many is ready to go to be the glory? How many of you are ready? Just ready? I'm ready now. Just go. Ready? All right. Uh-uh. Pastor already said, coming at, well, Ms. Wars, like a thief at night. He's coming. But you got to be what? Ready. See, I'm not focused on that. I know I'm ready because I, what? I'm in a love relationship and I'm obeying his teaching. So what? I'm aligned with God's word. So if we come today, tomorrow, I'm what? See? That's it. Whether you realize or not, He's coming. How do, you, how do you see Christ's work? And that's what the scripture is trying to tell us. You see Christ's work in unity. It's not about the denomination. It's about us, all denominations, lifting up Jesus Christ. You're going to different schools. You're talking about Jesus. And you see his glory. He makes it visible to you. Because he wants you to see it. He wants you to recognize that he is with you. But let's not lose sight. If we don't get into this word, if we don't obey his teaching, then he say, I don't even know you. So the encouraging word is that we have an opportunity today to get it right. To start today. And don't feel guilty. Hey, you know, I only read two verses. It's about your time with who? The Father. How many of us recognize our Father? You know, and, and, and I, I was in closing, just wanted to give the young people something to think about, or us all something to think about as believers. We still have a job to do. We still, listen, we say, I'm praying that you get this thing right. I'm praying that you expand the kingdom. I'm praying that you don't get so complacent that you think it's all about you, when you do things, all the glory is back to who? God. We do it, his presence, his glory in us, but we give it back to him because he's worthy to receive the glory. Excited. Excited, you know why? Because today the Holy Spirit is still working, even when he was writing this, even when he was saying this, and he was praying Fervently about, hey, I love you. And God, no matter what you've done today or d- up to this day, and you say, you know what? I need a relationship. Uh, I, I laid this down, and God said, come to me, those who are weary and heavy burden. He said, I will. Who? He said, I will give you rest. And once you get that strength up and you start working together with your co-workers in your schools, and you see Christ develop that unity, you get to want more and more what? Of Jesus Christ. More and more and more and more until you be like 98 like my granddaddy. He'll be 98. Who are you today? Who are you? Remember our question about when did you believe that Jesus Christ and accept him in your heart. When did you believe? How do you believe? The only way to get to the Father is through Jesus Christ. Do you have that relationship? See, sometimes 
We can hear the word, but we haven't received the word. And that is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So don't leave this place. You know what? I, I heard this before, and you know what? I'm going to wait till later. God's knocking at your heart today. Open up your heart and let him come in. Remember, God loves us first, and God loves us more. So no matter what you're going through, God said, I love you. He said, I love agape love, unconditioned love. No matter what, I'm here for you as you stand on your feet. And you think about the goodness of God and how he poured into you and how he gave you time over and over again. This is your day. This is exciting times that you realize that Jesus is all you need. Remember, what you do for Christ will last forever. Let's work in unity. Let's work in love. Let's not focus on the minor differences. Let's focus on unity for Jesus Christ. So that we all can run this race together because he is the answer not for just today but for eternity he has a better place for us and he's knocking at some of you, someone's door today don't leave without change don't leave without that relationship realizing that he wants you he loves you he needs you what a great God what an awesome God. Let's make a big deal about God. Let's make a big deal about who? God. Young people, at your school, when you start school, a couple weeks, make a big deal about God. God loves you. And we always need to make a big deal about Jesus Christ. You may be seated. All right. Brothers, uh, now I'm asking for prayer. Um, the brother asking for prayer. I guess I would do it for th the brothers asking for prayer. So, so brothers who want to come up here and join us, join us. He need unity. See, a couple weeks ago, I just go through and I just pray, or we just pray, right? Thank you, brother. Thank Heavenly Father, oh Lord, we thank you, God, for your servant here today, God, who come down for prayer, God. Oh Lord, you know what he need, God. Oh Lord, we just pray, God, that you just give him what he needs so he can give you the glory back, God. Oh Lord, I pray a special prayer, God, that you just protect his mind from the evil one, God. He's looking to destroy God, but we pray, God, that you give him peace. You give him strength, God, and let him know, God, everything is all right with you, God. You have to go back over and over again, God, that once you say, Lord, I give it to you. I lay it at your feet. I lay it at your altar. Take it away, God. And God said he'll throw it away, and you will remember no more. We pray, God, that my brother and father will have that excitement that he had God, in you, God. That you open his eyes and his mind, God, to see you, God. That he'll see your glory. That he will understand you. He is a child of God. And as being a child of God, you said you got him. You cover him. 
you shouldn't him, God. And Father, anything that Father that's in them that shouldn't be we ask Father, Father, you just remove it right now, God. Whatever the pain, whatever the suffering, whatever it may be, God. Disappointment, whatever, God. We pray for a new beginning. We pray for your power, God. Right now, God. God, protect him, God. Protect his home. Oh, Lord, protect his environments, God. He go around, God. We pray, God, for godly friends, God. Men and women of wisdom, God, of Jesus Christ, God. Oh, Lord, we let him know that we know he know he love you, God, but we love him, God. We thank you for that love relationship, God. That he can come to his family in prayer, God. And we don't take it lightly, God, because he is a child of yours. And you never have left him, God. You say, I never leave you nor forsake you. That's how God, that's the kind of God we serve, God. And we thank you, God, for restoring, God. Restoring, 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 restoring what he thinks is lost. But you said you going to give it back. We pray, God, for obedience. We pray, God, for making time with your word, God. That your word will open his heart. And he can do what you call him to do. We come, God, thank you in Jesus' name, that Jesus, that he had the strength to come down. And we thank you right now for the brothers and sisters, God, who come down and, and being with him, God, to, to, to show, show support, but most of all, show love, God. As you show love to us, God, when we was down, when we needed a prayer, God, you lift us up. You made us what we are, God. And look at us. We say, Lord, thank you, Lord. And we thank you, God, for what you're doing right now in the brother's life, God. And continue, God, to protect him and give back and take care of him. Father, most of all, God, that he give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God for the word. Thank God for his spirit moving in this place. And you know how young folk are under attack. And we have to pray for them. That God would keep their minds. Listen, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how strong you think you are. The devil can't attack your mind. And having a breakdown doesn't mean that you have lost your faith. announcements in a minute, but I don't know where that 
that ideology come from that mental illness is not real because it is it's, it's real and again it doesn't mean that you've lost your faith in God it doesn't mean that you're not saved but the devil attacks and for us to be praying one for another is what we've been called to do Amen. Sister Jenkins is going to come now with our announcements. Good morning, St. Thomas. Praise God for another opportunity to praise his name. And awesome job to our youth. Um, the following announcements. Um, Hines County Congress of Christian Education, Reverend Clyde Robertson, President, Reverend Daryl McGee, Vice President, presents Fun in the Sun. You fellowship. The date is Saturday, July 22nd at 2023 at Mount Olive Community Park, 6449 West Northside Drive, Bolton, Mississippi. The time is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the admission is free. Calling all youth of the Hines County Congress of Christian Education. Come join in us in the Faith Field Day of, French, of Fellowship Friendship and Fun Featuring Games, a Bible Bowl, Books of Bible Scrabble, praise dance, prizes, food, snow cones, and other fun-related activity. Feel free to invite a friend or two to this activity with you. Looking forward to this day of fellowship and your participation. Thanking you in advance, Hines County Congress of Christian Education Youth Department. The Hills of Zion Missionary Baptist Church, the Old Time Way Gospel Service. July 22nd, 2023 at 5 p.m. We invite you to join us for an evening of praise and worship. Brownsville Missionary Baptist Church, 7565 Bolton Brownsville Road, Bolton, Mississippi. There will also be a book signing by our very own D. Jaden Reedus, author of Prayer Time, to St. Thomas Missionary Baptist Church. Please send your choir to participate on this program as we pre present some and introduce to others our D. Jaden Reedus, author of a book entitled Prayer Time, with a, musical, with a musical and book signing to be held Saturday, July 22nd, 2023 at 5 p.m. at Brownsville Missionary Baptist Church. If your choir cannot attend, please send a representative of your choice thanking you in advance, Hills of Zion Youth Department. There is a political forum July 20th and 21st at 5.40 p.m. Every vote counts, your voice, your vote. August 8th, Belmont Baptist Church Family Life Center, 1411, 14011 Highway 18, West Raymond, Mississippi. The State Senator, District 29 candidates, David Blunt and Dwayne Pickett, District 4 Supervisor Candidates Robert Amos, Wanda Evans, Mr. Gavin, Allison Lauderdale, James Lott, and Eamon Thompson, also Brandon Presley for Governor. Homegoing services for Gloria Tarvin will be held Saturday, July 15, 2023. Members of St. Thomas, we ask you to help prepare sides, drinks, and water. Have a blessed week in your week to come. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jenkins, for those announcements. Uh, is it the Hines County Congress of Christian Education, the fun day? Uh, we invite each of you all to come and be a part of that. Uh, we're looking for a great time. Also, this coming Saturday, as been mentioned, the homegoing service for our own sister Tarvin. If you would like to donate anything or even money, who do they see? See you. Okay, see sister, sister Ward. If you'd like to donate anything, money or uh, water, soda, or what have you, then see Sister uh, Ward after service. Also coming up is our 
uh, General Missionary Baptist State Convention. Uh, I'm try I was trying to remember the dates. It just it starts on the 17th next week. That's right. So if you want to be a part of uh, our state convention, the classes that are going on, please see Sister Burns uh, after service. There are some great classes going on that will be held at Greater Pearly Grove uh, Baptist Church starting next Monday, but the pre-musical starts Sunday night. It's Sunday night at, uh, I believe it's at 6 o'clock at Greater Fairview. Uh, that's the musical, and then the classes start uh, that Monday at Greater Pearly Grove. Also, we are glad to see our brother here today, uh, Senator Hillman Frazier and Sister Frazier here with us today. Amen. Good to see them. And somebody decided to throw an opponent at you to this time. Uh, but we're trusting God. Amen. 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 Also, where's Sister Etris at? Stand up, Sister Etris. Don't be scared. You gotta stand up. Today is her birthday. Don't be trying to guess who told me. I found out. Amen. So we say happy birthday to you. Amen. You 25 today. You 26 today. Okay. <laughs> also is a uh, he ain't here today, bro. Frank Shelby's birthday is today, I'm told. Amen. Who else got a birthday today or this week coming up? Sister Milton, when is it? <laughs> you 25 too, huh? <laughs> 30, huh? <laughs> the 12. When is the 12? Wednesday. Okay. Well, happy early birthday to you. Amen. You like me, I'd be forgetting too. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still a baby. Yeah. Look, Sister Jenkins. In case I forgot to say the time, the funeral is 2 p.m. on Saturday. 2 o'clock. Amen. This Saturday coming up, 2 o'clock for the home going for uh, Sister Tarvin. Uh, we will have Bible study this week uh, at noon. Via Zoom, so we encourage you to join us. Uh, we're having a good time, so we solicit your prayers and your presence if you can show up uh, via Zoom. If you need to get the link, uh, you can call the office or see Sister Sherry Wilson after service today, and she'll be able to hook you right on up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Continue to pray one for another. Uh, continue to pray that God will keep us in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed on him. Amen. Amen. Shall we stay? If you're happy, say amen. If you're happy and you know Say, amen. Oh, makes oh. If you're happy.
Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forever. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people sang together.